right, hello and welcome to episode 15 of Diggs Sideline Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Sam DeCosmo. And my name is Patrick Alonia. Pat, it's good to be back. Sam, as much as I as much fun as I had with Alex and Joe last week, gosh dang it, did I miss you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I miss being here. It was a good episode you guys had, though. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just got to say I messed up the audio again. I, I don't know. I've outdone myself two weeks in a row. Sam is looking for a new replacement. We're, <laughs> no, we're, no, no. We're accepting applications. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I honestly, the Pat, the show couldn't run without you. That, well, that's, that's just a, that's just a fact. Uh, all right, but it is uh, week eight of the NFL season, and it is Vikings Redskins in Minneapolis. Correct. Thursday night football. Guess who's back. Guess who's back? Guess who's coming back, back home? Back again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a couple people coming we back. We do have a couple home hometown heroes. Um, one of them is Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson. And all the day. other is? My man, Case Keenum. Case Keenum. Pat, you said it couldn't happen. You said we wouldn't be playing him. <laughs> I think the coach said that, that Case Keenum was going to play this week. Ah, uh, yeah, he's playing. Uh, <laughs> hey, I was did we close. Put, did we put money? Did we, did we make a bet in week one? Yeah, I think it was, what, a couple hundred grand? <laughs> <laughs> You know so what? I'll we'll, Venmo you. Yeah, we'll have to we'll, we'll have to figure out what that was and settle that. Uh, but yeah, so um, Case Keenum and the Redskins coming into town, and they're bringing their high flying offense and their and their stout defense, and they're missing head coach. And <laughs> the Redskins the, are a mess. The Redskins are an absolute mess. Um, I so I I want to say we're probably going to talk a lot of not smack, but just real talk about the Redskins and how they are lacking in a lot of departments. Uh, but I do want to preface everything with saying this is a classic trap game. Yeah. You know, we're coming on a, a three-game win streak. Uh, everybody's talking high about us. NFL just put us in the top five in, the, in their power rankings. Everybody is talking about how great Kirk Cousins is and how bad the Redskins are. This happened to us last year against the Buffalo Bills. And that was when everything. That was honestly when the season started to get derailed. Right, right. You're 100 percent right. And I do want to say, last year against the Bills, I had that gut feeling. Yes. And it happened this week. There ain't no gut feeling. There, I'm feeling there good isn't a, this there, week. There isn't a gut feeling. But it, it's still a trap and game. I, and I had the same. I had the same gut feeling that you had. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> but but it's but I still want to. I it's it's a trap game. And as long as we we recognize that going, we right. as if we're part of the team. <laughs> and, hey, we are. And, a, and essential <laughs> to the success of the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> Uh, no, but as long as it's recognized beforehand, that hey, we still need to we still need to show up to work. We still need to play hard and play our our version of football. I think we'll be all right. Um, do we quickly? Let me quick say: Do we see uh, a Kirk Cousins ten touchdown performance? <laughs> Ten touchdowns, <laughs> dude. Along with all the fire he's been under lately, I think this game he wants to prove them wrong. I'm, I'm seeing ten TDs this game. <laughs> What's the NFL record for touchdowns? Like Actually, seven? I don't have a clue. Seven passing touchdowns. I think it, that is. But yeah, no, I. I it was funny. I think uh, Ron Johnson had a tweet today, and he was like, "We just need to hire somebody to just follow Kirk Cousins yeah. around and just say negative things about him." <laughs> <laughs> so that he can keep that chip on his shoulder. Seriously, he needs it. <laughs> he needs it. We need it. We need it. Yeah. We, we're the fans. We need it more than anything. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, the Redskins are coming into town. Uh, so, their offense, uh, Case Keenum, Adrian Peterson, a starting left tackle that's holding out. Um, and honestly, not much else. I think their wide receivers are all – they're either injured or just, like, not great. Yeah. You know, their, their offense – there's really not much to talk about. You know, it's and it's weird. So we've so the Vikings have played two other teams that have that played the Redskins the week previous. So when we were kind of looking at film, we were also looking at film with the Redskins and they were just bad. And on and during those games, we both just had to say Sorry, I can't. I can't watch this game. I have to go to the week previous because right. the Redskins were so bad. I can't take any nuggets of wisdom from from this game. So, and it just and it was the same thing last week. Granted, the weather was bad. It was kind of a slip and slide out there, and and they were playing the 49ers, which is I believe they're the only remaining undefeated team in the NFC. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah with uh, the Patriots or yeah, in the NFL. Yeah, yep. yeah. So I, but they, I will say this and maybe the weather played a factor, but they held the 49ers to nine points. Yeah. They and really their, off, their offense is really, really good. So right. I, that, that, that game was only fun for the sole purpose of seeing the highlights of everyone slide around the field. It was so funny. <laughs> there, I was watching one, uh, one play and the, the guy was like diving to make a tackle. He missed but he continued to slide right. and he like almost <laughs> continued to make the play again. It was actually, it was pretty hilarious. So I think they probably had a blast. Oh like, yeah. That's your classic backyard football. Oh, You're yeah. a little kid, you know, everybody just <laughs> loved it. 
Uh, the when Nick Bosa uh, sacked the the quarterback and yeah. he just like did a, a huge slip and slide. <laughs> that was it was it was a fun game in that regard. I mean, yeah. the football was the the game was okay. Right, right. But I mean, the Redskins just they only got into to Forty ers territory like a handful of times, but then they just like froze and didn't know how to move the football anymore. Right. I think Adrian Peterson hurt his ankle. On a, okay. on a is play, he going to play that he fumbled. Thursday? He Did said, he fumble? Yeah. He, well, it was the same play he hurt his ankle, so oh, okay. I'll give him a little oh, bit of credit. Okay, okay. And it was I, I'm laughing just because last on yesterday's episode, they, we were talking about them fumbling, yeah. him fumbling all, all his career. But yeah, anyways. well, and, and in the most important moments of his career. <laughs> yes. We won't, we won't get into it. Yeah, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, so Adrian Peterson, he says he'll be fine. Uh, I think that's more just like he really wants to play in his homecoming against Minnesota. We'll we'll see. I'm not sure how he's feeling. Um, speaking of players not feeling well, Zimmer. I I saw a report. Zimmer was walking around the locker room today and just asking the guys, you know, how are you feeling? I know we're, we're it's kind of on a short week. We you know we play in two days. You know, how are you feeling? And the guys are like, you know, I think I'll be all right. I'm a little banged up, you know. But and Zimmer's like, good, nobody cares. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> Wait, is this a video or just an no, article? No, I, I think I saw it in a tweet or an article or something uh, like that. You gotta send me that. And I was like, oh man, that's just, that's classic Zimmer. Good, nobody cares. <laughs> uh, speaking of injuries. I don't do. You, do you think we're seeing Thielen? Because I saw two reports. I saw one where he's his he's expected to come back sooner than earlier expected, and he might play. And then I saw one where they were like, "There's no way he's playing." You know, I I think he'll I think he'll suit up. I think he'll be active. I don't think he'll be scratched. Do you want? He, do you think we need him to come play? He might today? play. I don't think we need him to play. I, I don't think agree. I, don't I think either. once we get up at least two scores, he's he's done for the night if yeah. he plays at all. Right. You know that's that, that's the most I w- I could see him playing. I, I'm in the mindset with this being a hamstring injury; those can be kind of naggy. Yeah. Especially C- C- Cook last year. Yeah. Had that hamstring was up from like week two to like seven or so. Yeah, five weeks. Kind of, yeah. 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 So I'm okay with letting him sit against Redskins, and then we don't play again until we go to KC. So it's a little bit of a break there. What was the 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 injury? They they might have talked about. It. I was actually I was watching the game on my phone in the middle of a field at Camp Ripley's. <laughs> <laughs> I love the commitment, and so, man. <laughs> and so, and so I, so I, I was able to watch the game. I couldn't really hear anything that was going on. Did they say it, it did he strain his hamstring? Was it a bruise? What's I going think on? When they looked at it after the game, they kind of revealed that it was a hamstring injury, but I watched the replay multiple times and they showed it during the play. And it was one of those where like, you kind of looked at him, you're like, I, yeah, I, you don't know what what hurt. You have no idea what he didn't twist his ankle. He didn't like hurt his hand. He didn't hit his head. Like, you right. know, he just kind of got up limping. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. So I, it ended up being a hamstring injury is what they did an MRI on. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But um. Speaking of which, I I just wanted to say, how do you think the atmosphere is going to be with Kirk Cousins or Kirk Cousins, um, Case Keenum and AP coming back? I think it'll be a lot. I think there's nothing but good feelings on both sides. Yeah. You know, not not even just with the players and the teams, but with the fans as well. I don't think obviously there's zero fans that have any ill will towards Case Keenum. You know, right. half the fan base wanted to keep him, so I think he'll be received well. Adrian Peterson, he may have overstayed his welcome, but he there were there were way more good times than bad times. I mean, he was a leading rusher uh, in the NFL for us for you know three seasons, I believe. He was the MVP one year for us. You know, there there was a point in time where we, we were on that quarterback carousel for a long time. It was like when we were down to like Josh Freeman, yeah. and you know, I think we were we were supposed to play in prime time. And you know how they put, you know, the quarterback against the quarterback and they yeah. have that graphic. It was whichever quarterback we were playing against and then Adrian Peterson. They just didn't even, <laughs> they didn't even put the quarterback well, in. We didn't have a quarterback to put in. So I, Kate, uh, Adrian Peterson carried our team way longer than yeah. he, you know, than he, than a running back is supposed to. Right. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And and I just want to say, I, you'd have to imagine that they're going to play the Minneapolis Miracle before the game, right? You'd think so. They have to. You, you, gotta, you know, just just get Case uh, yeah. up on on and and, and digs. Right, and right. No defenders. Just exactly. running the running the play. Yeah, and... exactly. So I think it's going to start out with good feelings, and it's going to hype everyone up, and then the Vikes are going to just come out. Yeah, you know? I, I think so. I think <laughs> it'll be it'll be it'll be a fun game in that aspect I, I don't think that the game is going to be necessarily good to watch which you know none of the prime time yeah i wanted to talk lately. about that your brother john mentioned that yeah and 100 percent agree well i mean the the patriots and the jets were last night and it was like Horrendous. just a blowout it was a 30 30- there was there was one moment in the game that i just i couldn't help but laugh it was when uh when uh bell it was like late in the fourth quarter yeah, explain this to me because yeah. I, I didn't see the full thing all i saw was him smiling but can, give me like the give me so the picture it was, so it was late in the fourth quarter the patriots were up 33 to nothing and they were kind of in that zone 
where you're too far away to kick a field goal, but you're also too close to kick a punt effectively where it's not going to go in the end zone and get a touchback. So they actually want the, the Patriots wanted to get pushed back five yards to give their punter a little bit more room. And, and so what they did was they just, you know, let the clock wind down to zero delay a game. And Adam Gase was having none of it. He declined the penalty. So what Belichick does is he tells those guys, jump off sides. <laughs> <laughs> so they false start. They throw the flag. And, uh, and you know, they, they, false they start. They it again? Five-yard penalty. And the penalty was declined. <laughs> and Belichick's just smirking. And he's just like, all right, we'll pump the ball. You know, but it's uh, late in the fourth yeah, quarter. You're right. up 33 to nothing. It's like, come on. He's, right. just, he's just toying with him. Yeah, it's yeah. like a cat playing with a, right. a mouse that is like injured and yeah. can't move. It's just, <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was kind of funny to watch. Yeah. But, but back to, to what you said there, the primetime games have just been stinkers. pretty bad. Yeah. There's only been a handful the Packers Eagles <laughs> was a good primetime game. That's the only one that I can really think of off the top of my head. That was a good really, yeah, game. honestly. And, and I know it's difficult to kind of, pick good teams and you're trying to keep it a variety so it's not always the cowboys which yeah the cowboys are always on there but you know what i mean and so I, I just think that this is kind of a hit towards the nfl as a whole well yeah and i think part of the reason is because there's such a disparity between good teams and bad teams right now especially in the oh you know, there really is yeah even in the in the afc in especially, particular especially in the afc so if you look at the afc let me pull the standings up real quick but the patriots are sitting at number one and I, I just I want to go through their games just to say, hey, the Patriots are seven and zero, and and the, everybody's saying that they're you know you know they're the number one seed in the AFC. Listen, they played the Steelers at home, and the Steelers have no one, right? Because Big Ben went out, right? The Dolphins, who are actively trying to tank their season, they played the Jets, uh, and I believe Sam Darnold was out with mono that game. Yep. Uh, they played the Bills and almost lost hey, to the, the Bills. Bills. Are actually doing okay. The Bills this are year. a good team. The Redskins, who <laughs> seems like they're actively trying to tank, but they're not. <laughs> but they are a terrible team this year. The Giants, again, another terrible team, and the Jets again last night. So they've just played nothing but garbage teams. And it, that's not to say that these, you know, the, the folks on these teams, they're NFL caliber talent. So that's not saying that they're necessarily. Right bad teams because they're obviously in the NFL but on the the level of talent just between the teams is so despairingly large I right. just there's you can't really put an, a, a good beat on it right yeah no you're 100 right um and, and so I think the Patriots schedule does get a little more difficult we got the the Browns are coming up then the Ravens so the Ravens should be a good one I'm gonna yeah. give Philly as as another t- good test Cowboys Texans Chiefs and then the Bills again. I'm going to yeah. So the Bengals and it'll, it'll be interesting but. to see how they do uh, <laughs> coming down the stretch. Patrick Mahomes is out for three games. Did... He comes back. He'll be back. He'll be back yeah, by yeah, then. He'll okay. Be back. Yep. So yeah. So the and the Bills are and, the and Bills are that. five that, and one. That's a three twenty five game. There's no reason why Chiefs Patriots shouldn't be Sunday Night Football. I think it's too early in the season to flex it to Sunday Night Football. I know, but I'm saying, why is that not already pre decided? That's, that's a good. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So I don't question. know if there's something better, but yeah. I don't know. So it'll be interesting. The other team I want to talk about that everyone is raving about, I actually saw an article today that said that they are the best team in the NFC, and it's the Green Bay Packers. Oh and I was like, okay, first of all, first of all, the 49ers are undefeated, and they are rolling. They're rolling over good teams like the Rams and things like that. Let's I, let's do the same thing and take a look at the Packers. Yeah. So the Packers are what? They're 5-1? and one? Yep. And again... So they so they beat the Bears week one in Soldier Field. That was ten to three. Fairly impressive, given given the fact that it's a division rivalry and the Bears were coming off a good season. The Bears have co- kind of collapsed this year. Uh, then they played us, which they got the best of us on their first three drives, and then we shut them down. Okay, I'll give them those two wins, but the rest of these wins are just kind of junk. Well, they could have they could have easily lost to the Broncos. That was closer than the score they, was showing. Uh, yeah, there. exactly. So they could have lost to the Broncos, but the Broncos are not a great team. Mm. They did lose to the Eagles, who are a bad team. They beat the Cowboys, which <laughs> they are a terrible team. They beat the Lions, but that was a sham game because the refs handed it Thank to you, them. Thank you, refs. Exactly. And then they beat the Raiders, who are another junk team. Yeah, so, so it's they, like, they should be a middle-of-the-pack team they right should, now. Yeah, I, I'm giving them – I'm giving them – yeah. they. I'll, I'll give them three wins there. I'll give them three wins. They should not be where they are. They shouldn't have beat the Lions. They, they shouldn't have beat us. The, I'm going to say that. Beat, they shouldn't have beat us. They shouldn't us. have beat us. But you know what? They We did let them get the best of us. But 
to say that they're the best team in the in the N- NFC. The, and that, that, that's just your classic, the NFL, just that infatuation with Aaron Rodgers. It's, it's ridiculous. And I know he's amazing, but come on. The other, the other thing I wanted to point out here, over the stretch of their first, uh, how, what is it, six games, they've played five games at home. That sucks. So, yeah. So, that sucks. Well, it's, it does suck, but here, here's the thing. It's kind of padding their stats a little bit because there's, you always have an advantage where you're, when you're at home, especially when you're Green Bay playing in Lambeau Field. That atmosphere is electric because that is, that's, that is a fan base that is passionate. As much as they right. annoy me, they are very passionate. Yeah. So that, that definitely helps. Uh, but they're going to have a tough stretch on the road well, here. Because they've got the Chiefs. Oh, again, Patrick Mahomes is out too. He'll be out against us too. But I, I won't cut the Chiefs out just yet. I won't either. I won't count them out just yet. Chargers were good last year, but they're, they, they've they're fallen off great. again, like the Rams. The Panthers, Panthers are undefeated with their with their second string quarterback, Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen. Kyle yeah. Allen. There's word that Cam Pe- Newton might not be coming back. People are saying that Kyle Allen is the Tom Brady to Cam Newton's Drew Bledsoe. Hey, good point. Yeah, yeah. that could be. That absolutely could be. And then they're going to play the 49ers. I'm going to laugh my butt off when the Packers just get blown up by the 49ers in San Francisco. You're predicting That's, a complete blowout. Oh, complete blowout. I'm <laughs> talking. You? I'm talking 41 donut. <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> Holy freak. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah. It's it's going to be, yeah. They'll play the Giants, cool, whatever. They'll play the Redskins, cool, whatever. The Bear, they're going to play the Bears again. Cow. And then they're going to play us and then the Lions. I, It'll be it'll be interesting, but they only have a, a handful of home games down the stretch, and I think that they're I think that they're going to fall apart. Yeah, I, I sure hope so as well. Yeah. Um, and then I guess while we're kind of talking, I, I, I read something interesting. There, Matt Nagy has been getting a lot because you mentioned earlier. Matt Nagy has been getting a lot of criticism actually this year for how he's been running his offense, and we have been praising him. Yeah, we've been praising him this year. And I was reading some some articles and comments, and Bears fans are just like frustrated with Nagy and the fact that he's not running the ball with Montgomery and Cohen, you know, and, yeah. and, and these fans who I think love this this whole, the whole. Uh, why can't I think of what kind of like style of offense that is when just. Just misdirections? Yeah, misdirections. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're complaining that it's kind of overshadowing what they should be doing as what they used to do with um, Howard, where they used to run for 1,000 yards a year, you know? Yeah. And so there's he's go, he's kind of under some fire there, too. And then don't make us bring up freaking Mitch Trubisky again because he is – he's just a joke. He is garbage. He's Absolute a joke. garbage. They were, I was watching a little bit of the game against the Saints there, and all you saw were Bears fans in the stands like this. I firmly believe that we would have beaten the Bears in Soldier Field had Mitch Trubisky played the full game. That's I, that's why we were. I think we both said it. We were both a little frustrated that he went out. I know. I, and Chase Daniel is the best thing to ever happen to their team. This yeah. <laughs> Although I will say, would you rather have the Bears under Jay Cutler or under Mitchell Trubisky? Because they had some bad years Can under I say, Jay Cutler. So the friends of me that that know me from back in the day, I loved. It, there was always this joke, smoking Jay. <laughs> smoking Jay. There's a whole like Instagram and Facebook. It's just pictures of Jay with like a cigarette in his mouth on the sidelines. <laughs> I love it, dude. When he came out of retirement to play for Miami, they and they 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 asked him in a report because this was like a week before the yeah, season yeah. was supposed to start. They said, they said, are you worried that you you know we're in retirement and then you have to come back and be a professional athlete again? He's like, well, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, luckily. I play quarterback, so you don't have to be in that good a cardiovascular shape. <laughs> <laughs> That's what? such a Jake answer. I know. So his, his, all the memes came out with him having a cigarette in his mouth <laughs> at the at the press conference, and just so uh, funny. I, I miss Jay. We I miss do you, too. Bud. <laughs> I know. I I kind of wish that he would come back, but uh, so yeah. So the I I it's, it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Bears this year. I mean, Matt Nagy can turn it around. I I still believe that he can drum up some fantastic offensive plays. I just think Mitchell Trubisky is trying way too hard and there's a lot of pressure on him and he's over analyzing the situation and he doesn't want to make a mistake. That's what I was going to so say. And so he takes way too much time to go through all of his reads, and then he just gets clobbered. That's what I wanted to say. I, I'm seeing a little bit of Kirk Cousins early in the year where it just felt like Kirk wasn't – he just wasn't letting that ball fly. Yeah. He just wasn't throwing it. He was just trying not to make a mistake, and it, it's holding these guys back. And I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I kind of wanted to talk about that. So when we were playing the Bears, it was a, an abysmal offensive showing, and people were talking about how Kirk isn't the guy anymore, this, that, and the other thing. And after the last three weeks, Kirk's been like the best quarterback in the NFL three weeks in a row. 
So I think what happened was Kubiak and Stefanski had an idea of how they wanted to do their run their offense, and I think it was supposed to be featuring Dalvin Cook. Right. Because if you look at those first three games, we ran the ball at li- on like 30 six, plus times. 30 plus times. It was, it was like 65% of all of our plays right, were exactly. running plays, and Dalvin was having fa- a fantastic time. And you and and after the Bears game, when that just wasn't working because their front seven is just freaking incredible. Right. They trans they they took a look at their offensive pieces and said, "All right, we can't do what we want to do. We have to we have to use the tools that we have." And there's a, a there's a, a classic military general phrase that says, "You don't go to war with the army you want. You go to war with the army you have." And that's exactly the situation. And they were able to pivot to Kirk Cousins' strengths, and they looked at you know what Stefanski was doing at the end of last year. When you know we were getting cousin and cousins into the play action, you know, and it was uh, it was a basically a fifty fifty split run pass, and and we've gotten back to that, and it's 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 been wonders for us. So so I, I'm glad you brought that up too, because I was listening to Score North, and they were kind of talking about this topic too, and I think what they were kind of alluding to, and I think what we're thinking is that Kubiak and Stefanski both went up to Zimmer and said, hey. We understand your love for that run first style offense, but we need to kind of spread it out a little bit. Right. And I think it just goes to show that Zimmer is just not an offensive minded guy. No. He he and he comes from that old school style of football where it was the ground and pound. If he had AP, he would be thriving right. today. Exactly. You know, and, and I think they came to him and said that we you know, we can still get Cook hundred plus yards a game. Right. But let us kind of spread it out and, and make things a little more eccentric and fun and exciting and not be so one dimensional. Right, exactly. And I think a lot of that. So Zimmer is, you know, coaches that are defensive minded that want to run the ball. The reason they want to do that is for clock management. They want to shorten the game and they want to be able to keep their defense fresh. But it's like, if if you can say, Hey, we want to, we'll still be able to shorten the game, but we just need to do these other things so that defenses don't have us figured out. And you look back to, to comments like what Adam Thielen had it was saying, you can't run the ball 50 times a game and expect to win. You know, exactly. at some point you got to let it rip. And at the moment, everybody said, oh, that's a direct shot at Kirk Cousins. No, it was a direct shot at the coaching staff right. saying, we need a better game plan. Right. And again, it worked. And I think Cousins just showed his leadership in that moment, yeah. taking the heat and saying, don't worry, guys. I'll be better. And we all kind of said, "Oh, we've heard this before." But it was it was him just stepping up to be a leader. And I think that at in that moment when we when the team saw that that level of I don't want to say self sacrifice because now I'm just, now he's trying to sound like Jesus Christ or something <laughs> like that. But when he we saw that level, I think there was a level of trust that was that was built there, saying like saying we said some things to the public that shouldn't have been said. You know, we we're taking the bullet for each other here and we're, we're playing for each other and we're, we're, we're here to support each other. And we're here to win football games. And they've been doing that ever since. Right. And it's just, it's awesome. And that just goes to show that you have a team of people who are trying to win. Exactly. That's all it is. And yes, in, in today's day and age with media, everything gets skewed and it's all negative. And we even, we even talked about it, you know, and um, it just goes to show that I think things have changed. Like we've talked, talked about, but I completely agree. Yeah. So yeah, so again, getting back to the Redskins, um, I I just hope that we don't fall into the mindset or that the team falls into the mindset that this will be a cakewalk. Let's do this. Let's get into our our mini bye week here with the Thursday night football game, and uh, and yeah, I, I we we can't we can't just phone this one in. We have to show up, especially when you have somebody like Keenum playing, mm-hmm. who a understands Zimmer's defense. And B is going to be showing, you know, wanting to show up playing lights out saying, hey, I'm the guy that you should have kept. Right. Um, again, I don't think that there's any ill will there, but I do think that that's bulletin board material for Keenum to kind of play with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, that's spot on. Um, do you know what the Vegas line is? <laughs> okay. Yeah, let, let, let's talk about that. So we'll get into our score predictions. The the Vegas line is the Vikings by 16. <laughs> they opened up at 16 and a half. So the, by virtue of them lowering it down to 16, that means that people were betting on the Washington Redskins. But when you have a spread like 16 points. So actually, I, I, I want to talk about. So last week when Washington lost to San Francisco, they became the, I think it was the second team in NFL history to cover the spread 
without scoring a single point. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. The first the, team ever? The, I think it was first or second. Uh, but they, what, what was the spread? It was it was uh, 49ers by 10. And the oh, 49ers, it was nine. And, the, and they won. <laughs> so they covered the spread by not scoring any points. That's hilarious. So, so yeah, I mean, with a spread like 16 points, you know, I, I think people were taking the money line. And so they – or 16 and a half. So people are taking the money line. It's down to 16. That's still a very, very healthy money line. I I don't I don't know what to think for this game. I mean, we're we're banged up. You know, Thielen may or may not be playing. Um, it's a short week. I'm gonna say we win this game. Uh, we'll say 24 to 10. Okay. So what is that? That is Washington covering the spread. There you go. Because it's a 14 point uh, deficit. I've got 31 seven. 31 seven. 31 seven. I think this will be handedly taken care of. Okay. Um, I, I'm not too worried about this one. There's no pit in my stomach this time. There's no pit. <laughs> There's no pit. <laughs> All right. Well, I I'm excited to get this game behind us because Thursday night games have been yeah nothing but painful for for teams for a long time. That that turnaround is I mean it's brutal. It's brutal. Speaking as a fan. I love the fact that there's a Thursday night game because it kind of gives me, well, it gives me something to look forward to throughout the week. And it's like one last push until the weekend. I guess I do if it's not my team out there. You know, (laughs) yeah, exactly. But the thing is, is a lot of these guys, they play, they, so they, they play on Sunday Then you have uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to not only rest, but practice and prepare for the game. It's almost like a mini bye week. Well, it's, it will, but after the fact, after the fact, but so uh, Patrick Mahomes was injured on a Thursday night game on a short week yeah. when the week prior he had kind of messed up his ankle and now he messed up his knee. Granted, they're on different, they're, they're on different legs, but it's like you, when you're vulnerable like that, that, yeah. you know, changes up the play calling, you know, that he might not have called Andy Reid might not have called the quarterback sneak. Uh, so I mean, just things like that where you can't fully get healthy. Right. Um, on the flip side, you do get the mini buy right afterwards. I think by the the by virtue of us having a home game, and the fact that it's a team like the Washington Redskins is helpful to us, where we can kind of, um, again, it's I don't want to say take it easy because it's that's how you get into the trap game mentality, uh, but it's it's a, it's a lower risk situation I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I'm not like I said, I'm not too worried about it going into it. So, um, yeah. All right, Pat. Did, we both had wins on the. Yeah, we both yeah, we, right? we, yeah, we okay. both had this as wins. Yeah. So, we're, I think we're doing pretty well in yeah, our predictions. I think we are doing pretty well. Yeah. I think you are spot on right now with our yeah. win loss. I and I only had one loss at I this think point so. in time. So that's still not bad. But it's still not bad. So we're at two. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, join us on Friday. Join us on Friday for uh, the post game review. For Hopefully the post game review. Yeah. It, uh, yep. Thanks again, guys. And the audio should be good this week. (laughs) Hopefully. (laughs) Until then, Skull Vikings. Thanks.